確かに見たんだって動く卵を絶対に捕まえてやる Stop! Why would you say that? Bro! Why? Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Okay, we're watching this now. Frick you, man. You need Jesus. Let the Lord in into your life. Kentucky, there is a cave. Oh my god, when's the last time you made a video? I'm- Wait, please tell me this isn't about the guy- No. Is this about the guy upside down in the cave? That every now and then demands no, a No, okay. I'm sorry for bringing it up again. That shit cursed me to my core. January 30th, 1925. A man walks towards the cave with a kerosene lamp in his hand. He hangs up his jacket and ducks into a five-foot opening. The inside of the cave oh. is narrow. He has to drop down on his hands and knees, crawling through a passageway filled with jagged rocks and choking dust. This makes me want and to down peek. a chute he had cleared out months earlier. All of the daylight is gone from here, and this lantern is his only source of light. Ignoring the loose limestone rocks perched directly above him, he is now 100 feet in. And here he reaches the turnaround room. What the fuck is that? Now they call that? this the turnaround room because this is the juncture where even experienced cavers say no thanks and turn around. Because to continue on means going through this. The squeeze! The squeeze a gap in the stone of only nine inches. I could do that Threepen? easy. Here's a subway sub. Okay, thank you. Going Internet, through, he Mr. would look Historian. exactly like this. No! His arms will need to be completely at their side. And Dude, why would you even do that? What is so the... So that he can reduce the size of his torso. Gradually, bit by bit, he disappears into the hole. His clothes are caught on sharp gypsum crystals, hooking into him and threatening to hold him in place. But using his feet like paddles, he pushes through. He Who's reaches that? a wider opening at the other side. The real guy. Then Did he fucking die? Towards a ledge. Never mind, don't answer that. Illuminated here is a 10 foot drop. A rope is already secured around a boulder, which allows him to rappel down. His worn out leather shoes touch the ground. This Why is, is seared? Okay, as he wait, I'm go. sorry. I've. Okay, why? When Seer wears the yellow glasses, he looks kind of like he looks kind of like Evan Peters and Jeffrey Dahmer. And I saw him a couple days ago for Noodle Shop, and I just couldn't stop staring at him. I was like, bro, because he was wearing the glasses. And it is time for work to begin. What he is working on is another opening. At the moment, it's too small for anyone to fit through. But he will chip away at it until he can shove himself right through the other side. Because on the other side is this. A magnificent and otherworldly cave structure that will be irresistible It's not worth to it. Tourists. It's not that cool. No, it's not Every that cool. Every day for months, it's not that cool. been removing rocks from this crevice. To him, this is all just routine. So he eases further into the gap. Carefully, he contorts his body through. Rocks compress Bro, the sides why of is he going that way? So close that his arms are pinned to the side of his body. He once again paddles his feet to inch down. Then, about halfway, he stops. Hmm, the lantern. It's starting to dim. He will need to go all the way back to the surface to refuel the thing. He sighs. He slowly shuffles back Does he out, go in the fucking pushing dark? the lantern no! with his Then, oh no. Ding, crack, darkness. He has knocked over the lamp, and it has broken. Is this real? Now the man didn't pay. Or is this a f another he fucking creepy pasta? the dark before. And he could make his way back. Yes! No! I thought maybe this was like his fucking so Jeff the Killer video. So he continues out. Leveraging his ah! against what he thinks is the cave wall. But that is not the cave wall. That is in fact a rock protruding from the ceiling. As soon as he puts his weight against the rock, it breaks loose. A solid piece weighing 15 kilograms lands directly on his ankle. It aches. 
but he's okay. It doesn't feel as though his ankle is broken, just badly bruised and caught underneath the rock. So he shuffles to move the rock away. Suddenly, gravel. A lot of gravel. It falls onto his feet, his legs, his torso, and the weight of it all forces the wedged rock deeper into the gap underneath his foot. Pinned. He tries to push this forward. Guy is he cannot. A stupid he tries prick. to inch backwards. He cannot. He is stuck. This is Sand Cave. This man is Floyd Collins. He is trapped in absolute darkness. 60 Bro! feet deep below the earth. All of his limbs held in place at the very bottom of this. Why are you dumb? Why are you dumb? I'm blocking some shit at the top. But before I tell you what happens next... No! Add time. Speaking of people trapped in a cave, World of Tanks. World of Tanks is not only the best game I have ever played, it is the only game I have ever played. It's like cars, but tanks. Picture this, you're a hot new T-3485M and you've just joined the battle because some Cromwell B tank bagged your entire family. It's time That's for so rubbing. You must use strategy. You must use stealth. You must use your wits to defeat your enemies. Use long range or short range. It's available on console, but I want you to get it on PC. Imagine a world war, but there are tanks involved this time. What? Yeah, now like, you can. That happen? When you've seen as many messed up tanks as I have, you get a little cynical about the world. Holy My frick, God. they're burned it's... and, and dead. All the different tanks. You can collectomize and customize them all. Massive battles where you can constantly team kill and ruin other people's good time. What the f***? I'm on your f***! Yeah! Did I mention it's historically accurate? Especially the Japanese robot tanks. <laughs> Ooh, look. The tanks Ew. are kissing. Progressive. Use the invite code TANKMANIA and get Why the Excelsior 250k credits. Other stuff, That's a good go selling point, not the gonna description lie. And use the invite code TANKMANIA. Why Here's what not? you do. Give World of Tanks. Put that on one screen. You're then, right. Then, on a second monitor, you'll watch the next hour of this video while you play the game. Perfection. I'm contractually obliged to say <laughs> thank you. Someone said docking. Stop! For being a Why did friend. I hear gamer sounds? Go away. Sarge, no! Tanks empty, kid. Go on without me. No, use your repair consumable. It's too late, kid. Tank care of my family for me. No. Get it, 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 get it. Add o nice. Collins No! <laughs> unable to move. His left arm the ad was so good that I forgot that we're watching this is torturous right, shit. Ridged by the rock ceiling above. Beneath him, sharp crystal shards dug into his skin. Ice thawed, traced across the ceiling. He looks and so calm and relaxed, though. Onto his face, oh, cool God. underneath him. The water was a consistent 54 degrees. Floyd tried to breathe calmly in the concentrated dark. When he did attempt to shuffle, more gravel and rocks would tumble from above and pile onto his feet. So nothing would work. He clawed at the cave walls till his fingertips were bloody and he realized that there was only one option left. Call out for help. But wait, 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 wait. Who is Floyd? And why did he even go into a dangerous cave? Yeah, you dumb frick. Floyd has been exploring what the caves the of fuck? Kentucky since he was merely six years old. And as he grew up, he gained a reputation look, for being like a too. very daring caver. He would dive into some hole on Daddy one side Potter. of town and emerge miles away on someone else's property. Sup? <laughs> He grew up and he became embroiled in the Kentucky Cave Wars. The Kentucky Cave now, Wars! way too much to of go Of course. Into but the summary version is, there's this huge network of interconnected caves called Mammoth Caves. It's actually the largest cave system in the world. And there's a city right in the middle of it. Cave City. Cave real city. name. So of course, cool. there are dozens of cave entrances on private property all over the place. Now, farmland in this region has very poor soil, and things do not grow well here. So, cave tourism as a source of income quickly became the prominent thing. However, 
a problem. There are a very large number of caves, but there are only why a would you, limited okay, number Why would you want to tourists. tour a cave? So competition rapidly escalated. Visit my cave. No, no, no. Visit my cave. What Big signs fuck? were erected saying, ah, tourists, no come to internet? me. Ah, mine oh. is definitely open. Mine is the best. But Wait, yeah, what did, what did people saying, do? What did people do back in the day before the internet? Like, you're in your 20s, and it's like, I don't know what to do. What do you do? Tour caves? Read books? Have kids? Oh, true. Yeah, and one of the documentaries I watched last night, this guy that was like... 24 or some shit he like had a wife and two kids and i was like 24 that would be that's like very uncommon now that shit's crazy they were hey, crazy by the way, back we're then. open but don't go to that one over there it's really shitty in fact it's dangerous this kept going further by the end they were blocking off the trail to each other's property beating each other in the streets and hiring people called cappers who would dress up as policemen cappers. and tell tourists no 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 you can't go in there that one no it's illegal despite the fierce competition floyd found a cave on his property and he started advertising it to tourists of course very few came all right loser thought, fucking what if loser I found something really special and unique then surely people would have to come to my cave to see it so oh, he no. kept exploring and exploring until he found this hollow it was filled with big gypsum crystals and when you were in there it felt like a completely alien world but it was barely accessible this small tunnel is the only way in he would need to dig for months to open it up to tourists but he knew why didn't he could he, do it. Why didn't Back he dig the from the front, though? They knew the like, why did he they knew the go potential. all the way in? They wanted it for themselves, and they wanted Collins gone. One I time, it. five of them just wandered onto Floyd's dig from property the, yes, and like, demanded he had... Why, why, did he, why didn't... If he was trying to make the cave opening wider, why didn't he just start at the front instead of going all the way in and getting stuck? Are you a cave expert? No, Over I'm sorry, leaves. I'll shut up. When he refused... <laughs> they just started beating the shit out of him. This only stopped when Floyd's brother, Homer, marched out with a shotgun and chased him. Okay, okay, I was. But Floyd was not look, I was asking a question and I was looking for answers. Okay, what's wrong with being ignorant and asking a fucking question? Turd. <laughs> he spent 12 hours. I didn't know there were cave engineers in months, chat. Clearing gravel and stone, chipping away at that passage. He would open it up to tourists. <laughs> Make his Jeez, I'm sorry I asked. I'm sorry. And make his dreams come true. Hey! <laughs> Is anyone there? So there's Floyd in the dark, yelling out for help. He's at the start of a very tiring loop. Sleep, wake, hey! yell. Sleep, hey! wake, Hello? yell. Hours Hello? passed. His voice hey! gave in. Arms tingled numb. Pain radiating Holy up his fuck. ankle. Here he remained in the dark for the next 23 hours. Quickly, you might wonder with the water no dropping on his after face. 23 hours. Yeah, worst day well, ever. Sand Cave resides on a 200 acre farm. There are several homes on this property with other families. One of them, of course, is Colin's house, where Floyd's father, Lee, resides. Now, Lee and Floyd constantly get into fights about how to run things. Lee wants his son to concentrate on farming, and Floyd wants to concentrate on cave tourism. His father knew the best thing to do. And Lee was also a bit of a drunk. It was doubtful that he would even notice if his son Floyd was missing. Also not helping things, Floyd regularly lodged at two other homes on the farm. So when he didn't return to one host, they would presume that he was staying with the other. And, even worse than that, he had recently spent 30 hours in a cave. So disappearing for this length of time wasn't seen as abnormal. Regardless, around the 23-hour mark, a few what locals started this? to suspect that, hey, something might be wrong, and they went to check up on him. And here, they spotted his jacket. Still 1925. Oh, fuck. They went deep. Yesterday. However, there okay, was only one you. person small enough to make it as far as the turnaround room. This was a 17 year old Jewel Estes. Please tell me he, he doesn't get to stuck into the squeeze. But it was close enough to call Colin's name. Floyd! 
and Collins Smart kid. yelled back. <laughs> Istis emerges from the cave. Okay, we know he's trapped and we know where he is. So, locals started to gather outside. Out of my way. Say a bunch of men who would each show up and take turns heading into the cave in an attempt to reach Collins. But once they reached the turnaround room... Nope. 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 They would fail to reach him, emerging from the cave, nope. soaked in mud and cursing. Out of my way, they would say as they were heading in the reverse direction. So a few more Don't hours Don't tell me passed, they sent the kid in there. Word would spread around town. Dozens of locals from Cave City started to gather outside. Over in Louisville, Floyd's 22-year-old brother, Homer, he gets a phone call. Homer. Ah, uh, hello? I see. Ah, my brother. He's trapped in a cave? I'm on my way. Homer jumps on a coach and makes his way to Floyd's cave. Homer struts up to the scene. Dozens of men are standing around outside. He ignores them all and marches right He's into like, the cabin, still wearing his city clothes. He makes his way in, down the chute, through what the, the narrow city passage, clothes? down on his hands and knees towards the turnaround room. And when he arrives, he does not hesitate. <gasps> he squeezes oh. into the hole, scrambles his way through to the ledge on the other side. He sees Floyd below and slides down to meet him. Floyd! Sup? I probably wasn't that casual. Oh, thank God you're here. Homer took a moment to shine his light around the area and assess the situation. It was not good. This rock formation is going to prove almost impossible to work around. All right, so let's have a look. Floyd is here. The rock is here, pinning his ankle. Hold up. Please, can we be normal for one day? Please, please. He's surrounded by rubble, and there's a pocket of gravel above <laughs> him, ready to fall. However, because Volume this up or subtitles? Sure, man. We could put on some subtitles. Everyone likes subtitles. I mean, it's so small. There are only two viable ways of reaching Floyd and that gravel. Option one, the most obvious, feet first. But if you do this, Subs you have to kind of squat, and your own torso <laughs> obstructs access to the rubble. Otherwise, option two, come down head first. That will give you better access, <laughs> but you're trying to move hundreds of pounds of gravel upside down. Worse yet, there's barely an inch around Collins what on either this? side. So good luck getting your arm down near Floyd's ankle to what? actually free him from the wedged rock. <laughs> Homer calls back to the less daring rescuers standing behind him. Quickly, some food and drink. They send it through. He hand feeds his brother a oh, pint maybe it's of coffee snuffy? and a total of nine sausage sandwiches. What the Feeling frick? better? Much better. Then Where you go? Homer went to task. He began removing rocks snuffy. and gravel, tiny scoop at a time, with the help of an old syrup can. Holy fuck! For the next eight hours, he toiled. First with hands, then once enough was cleared using a crowbar to scoop behind his brother, scraping away sharp protrusions as he went. It was slow progress. Virtually futile. As soon as he removed one rock or a scoop of gravel, another would tumble from above and land in the new this absence. Fool. And it was exhausting work. How did By he use the bathroom? He just didn't, I guess. Were naked. His lungs burned. He was losing hope. Homer emerged hours later, shivering violently, skin bruised from his fingertips but the cave barely yielded at all. However, something new. By the time Homer reached outside, he was greeted by a sea of approximately 100 men and women standing around, drinking, squabbling, and talking big game about how they too were going to save Floyd. The oh, press geez. was also present to help people gawk from afar. Now, Homer recuperated at a small tent near the cave's mouth, Strangers immediately oh, crowded scary. around him to ask innocent, but frankly, frustrating questions and offer unsolicited, obvious advice, as well as wildly impractical solutions. He should try untying his shoes, said one. 
Uh, what? No, we should send him down with a contortionist who's got a mallet and a chisel. Ah, we, we should jerk him off. Right, guys? All right, I made that third guy up. But you get the idea. And they started to argue with each other about their plans. Hey, how about using dynamite? One click formed, insisting that it was a great idea. And another saying, no, 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 the explosion will kill him and the weight of the new rocks will surely crush him. They fought for a while until they started arguing about gas torches, which will cook him what? or asphyxiate him or the gas will poison him. But by far the most common suggestion, of course, Are people was amputation. stupid? Are we never stupid? Never mind that the foot itself was unreachable <laughs> and never mind what the blood loss and shock would do to Floyd's weakened body and never minding even more that Floyd was strongly reluctant to the idea. Whatever you do, don't, don't cut, cut my, my foot off. <laughs> All of the squabbles would not have gotten on Homer's nerves, except that not one of them would just brave the damn cave and continue shoveling away the gravel. The formula was always Twitch chat would have probably already Twitch chat would have probably already killed him, dude. Imagine a Reddit thread of people discussing how to solve this problem. Oh my god. Maybe life was better before the Great internet. Great heroes go in with food and supplies. <laughs> Pull then reach the, the top of the and immediately lose their nerve, no. then dump the food just outside the hole, and then return back outside and go, oh, absolutely. No, he says, thanks for the food. Thank you so much. Yum, yum. No one would go through that squeeze. Dozens more men would try. All of them would fail. Losers. Useless. Holy shit. Poor guy. February 2nd, 9 a.m. What a nightmare. So far, Homer has been the only person to have- <laughs> Bro, I'm sorry I keep pausing to the parasocial cave rescue backseaters. <laughs> they really are, though. <laughs> ...reached Floyd. And it would continue to be true until... Here we are at the Louisville Courier. There's a spirited young newshawk named William Miller. He's talking to his boss, and he's trying to convince him that it's a great idea for him Holy. to cover the story of the man trapped in the cave. Listen up, boss. I'm hearing talk of a man in a cave. He's stuck down there, and I want to get down there, too. Get to the nitty-gritty, you hear? This is an opportunity for some good PR, Miller. I'm in. But I want us to sponsor that rescue. Picture this. What? Man saved from cave by Louisville Courier, <clears throat> the finest newspaper in the state. That'll drum up plenty of business. 24 carat idea, boss. I'll make it happen. I'll get down there too sweet. So off Miller goes Sponsored. to Floyd's cave. Wait, what happened? Ads? Back over at the cave, Homer the is sitting outside what? trying to recuperate. Did as Miller wanders up, he glares at the man True, they should have subscribed. clothes and answers every question with either a grunt or a one word answer. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Finally, he gestures to Sand Cave. Let I, bro, I do that so much when I talk to people. I don't even realize it. I go, you want yeah. More information? The hole's right behind me. Why don't you go take a look yourself? Holy shit. Now, Miller is only 21. But That's he is a lot a of freaking subs. Bro, man. five gift subs. Thank you. Trend. Mod Fox, 20 gift so subs. So he removes his suit, drapes Thank himself in coveralls, giving to the community. and grabs a lamp. Miller slowly enters the cave. He finds himself stepping in puddles and having to correct his balance against the ever softening walls. These were Why accumulating are the walls going problems soft? thanks to the gawkers outside who had lit campfires all around the entrance. That caused snowmelt, and the stable environment of the cave is starting to shift. But Miller makes it further than most. And all that's left is that final squeeze, and he's there. Oh God. He stops. He takes a moment and decides to call out to Floyd. Floyd! Hearing there is someone on the other side, he feels ashamed not to try. So he closes his eyes and moves forward. His slender figure begins oh inching Bro, through. Bro, if he gets stuck- The crystal gypsum cuts into his elbows and tugs at his clothes. He gets snagged. He's spluttering through the pools of muddy water. He stops, collects himself, and pushes on. He can barely inhale. If he gets stuck in here, he can only hope that someone else can come in from behind and pull him out by the legs. But eventually, he makes it through. Fantastic. He did it! He's now standing on the edge of a 10-foot pit, and he clumsily bumbles his way down. He sat right next to Floyd, ready to interview him. What?! But Floyd didn't really answer any of his questions. Wait, what? In fact, he was incoherent. 
At the moment, he is sitting in a cool water that what is the 12 fuck? degrees, slowly sapping his body temperature. He is dying from exposure. The cold is diminishing Floyd's mental faculties, and he can barely make sentences. So Miller took a few mental notes, and he left. He worked his way back through the squeeze, past the turnaround room, and out into the daylight. He is covered in mud and scratches <laughs> and numb head to toe. And when Homer saw, his hope reignited. Someone else had made it to Floyd. You and me, together, we can get Floyd out of there. Holy frick. If Miller hadn't gone to that cave, there's a good chance that Floyd's story would have remained an obscure footnote in the back pages. <laughs> But the interviews and first-person accounts gave the audience a glimpse of something real. Fear, hope, desperation, the full range. And so from Los Angeles to he looks New York, like Trevor. Floyd's story was picked up everywhere and described the Kentucky man's plight in sensational detail. It was also the era when radio became a regular feature for regular Americans. Radio allowed something new, hourly updates letting people get engrossed into the story. So, mostly thanks to Miller, the story of Floyd over the next now week we have read it. would grow and grow, seemingly frothing over for into streamer. every aspect Holy of American fuck. life. Social the press stop. at large would be clamoring over each other for every little extra scrap of detail they could get about Floyd. And everybody wanted to know, will this man make it? Back outside the cave, Someone new enters the scene. Oh shit. Lieutenant Robert Burden, a thin but strong 33-year-old Louisville firefighter. Like Miller, new he fighter. was able to navigate the passages of the Holy cave. Holy crap, Link Rage with the 26 the gift subs. Thank you, Scratched man. up pretty good and drenched in cold, muddy water. Thank you, dude. He managed to get through. He grabbed the rope and confidently lowered himself to Floyd's position. It was not an optimistic sight. Floyd's condition was deteriorating. Well... We've got a heck of a problem here, but I think I can get you out with a rope. Floyd nods It's like approval. twist drama but back in the day. We might just pull your bloody leg off. <laughs> just pull my leg off then. Get me out of here. Burden returned to the surface and faced the crowd. He announced. We will attempt a rope pull. The crowd moaned. It was dangerous. Oh, bro, they're gonna... It would certainly break his foot and could altogether pull it off. No! If there were jagged rocks, you'll fill it, the poor man. Amongst the crowd, a doctor stepped forward. A rope pull could stretch his internal organs and cause them to rupture. You'll kill him. But Floyd is dying of exposure down there. The situation is becoming desperate. Burden put caution to the side. The time for strategy is over. Now we try brute force. Oh God. What the fuck? Why is that was scary as fuck? Dude, Mr. Astorian is so fucking good at video editing. What the fuck? It's worth the wait. <laughs> what is this? Is he hallucinating? We're here! We're gonna get you out of here! After 79 hours in the cold water, he is delirious, fading in and out of consciousness. Homer gave his brother some coffee and fed him a couple of ham sandwiches. That warms him up and gives him a bit more energy, and he comes back to lucidity. Oh, much better. I'm gonna put the special <laughs> harness around you. The special Burden harness. And Miller. They're here too. We got three more boys right up the cave. And they're all ready to pull Bro, as hard as they this can is to get freaking you out me out. Here. Floyd was frightened. I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna hurt. He gave his brother some whiskey and a strong sedative to calm his nerves, and also to help him withstand the shock in case his foot is destroyed. Floyd took the opportunity to appreciate being surrounded by friends and family. Go on, do it. All right, strap him up. Homer tied the harness around Colin's chest and knotted the rope. Ready? Above. Miller is crouched at the top. Bro, the, the angle is so Ready. bad. Burden clenches the cord from further up the cave. Three. The ah. rope goes taut. Oh shit, as fan raid? 
If you were going to TwitchCon, would you see me in the hallway and, and recognize me, but then not speak to me and walk right past me? Who? Because I do that all the time to people. <laughs> Instinctively, Floyd gasps. The force of six men pulled against the clutches of the cave. Floyd began to scream. His body was being pulled up from the rubble. The gravel was beginning to shift. Burn <laughs> Will you go if soda goes? No. And clenched his teeth. Oh, harder. Floyd screamed harder as well. Now, Floyd was trapped in a supine position, but the direction of the rope caused an upwards force that wrenched him vertically. His torso was being no! compressed and bent against the ceiling of the trap. It would kill him. Floyd's screaming intensified, and through gasps was begging them to stop. The screams filled the echoing cave, but it did not stop. The agony What the fuck is wrong with them? On and on, with no progress. Enough! Enough! You guys are killing him! Homer pulled in the stop. opposite direction to give his brother some reprieve. Somehow, Homer mustered the strength to altogether wrench the cord from the other men's hand. Holy shit! The rope went slack. Brother's Homer, strength! Floyd and the rope lay limp on the cave floor, panting and exhausted. No progress had been made. The cave would not let this man go. The futility of the situation sank in, and all they could do was leave for now and reassess. Everybody was shaken by the experience. Burden fainted as he crawled towards the exit. Most of the other men had to be carried away. Outside, the crowd oh, had grown to 200. They buzzed and asked useless questions, and Homer walked dejectedly Viewers. past them. He sat by thinking what he could do. The cause seemed hopeless. Homer? Then, someone showed up who could turn things around. Who is he this? looked up to see a childhood friend of both his and Floyd's, Johnny Gerald. Hmm. Gerald knew more about cave rescues than most. In fact, just that summer prior, he had helped untangle Floyd from a different snag. He, he had been caught before? And right. he went in we'll again? See. Well, look who it is. Oh, Floyd God. perked up immediately. Yay. Thrilled <laughs> to see Gerald. All right, let's see what we can do. Gerald jumped down. For the next three hours, Cave Gerald Andy. went back to the original plan of Holy prying shit. away rocks. His stamina was good, and progress was surprisingly good as well. For several more hours, he continued, just moving stone after stone. New one would fall in his place, and he'd move that one too. By midnight, he had enough room to shift position and clear some of the gravel that was at each side of Floyd's body. Gerald would spend several more hours scooping, and it worked. For the first time, Floyd's torso was now available. Oh, then his shit. hips, his upper thigh. For the first time in over 90 hours, Floyd was able to wiggle his arms, his hips, and even that Huge. trapped right leg, though it was very painful to do. In that one session, Wasn't Gerald his brother managed to move scooping a too? half Maybe he just ton sucks of at rock. Scooping. I don't know. But there was still a lot more to go. And that rock by his foot was still holding him in place. Oh, by 2 a.m., Gerald was spent. He needed rest, Jesus. and he was ready to head back outside. Floyd, tomorrow you're gonna be a free man. Yay! Now here you might think that things will become straightforward. They did not. Now oh, that no. that space had been cleared, Burden became convinced that if he could get down that passage again, he could free Floyd with another rope pull. No! Him with both feet or just one. But when Burden tried to enter the cave pull again, his feet off. he was sternly rebuffed by the locals. They were playing gatekeeper. They had been specifically no. instructed to not let anyone in, and they were especially opposed to Burden making another rope pull after word spread about the disaster of the first attempt. He tried to reason with them. Let me try the rope pull again. It'll work this time. They wouldn't let up. Instead, they shouted obscenities and shoved <laughs> him in the keeping. other direction. They saved his foot, maybe. I don't know. Meanwhile, maybe he loses Gerald anyway. and Homer are incapacitated with exhaustion, and Miller was busy filing some paperwork for the Louisville Courier. Of course. Nobody else had the ability or the authority to take action, so Floyd spent all of that morning alone. Hello? Is anyone, Is anyone there? there? Help. Sag. Hey. No, it's gonna hit three digits. No! Word spread Holy about shit. Floyd. 
Miller's reporting had been picked up by the AP Newswire, and they distributed it amongst their hundreds of partnered newspapers. For Miller, it would be the biggest moment of his career. But he didn't stop to pay it mind. He spent the day hatching a rescue plan. Miller descended into the cave and set to work. When he entered, he found that the team before him had strung light bulbs all through the cavern. Nice. Leading all the way down to Floyd. Very handy. A bulb was also put around Floyd's neck to keep him warm and make sure that he was never again left in the dark. Miller popped down to Floyd. Ah, Floyd! Fancy seeing you here, Do not buddy. try to Reusing interview that him. that syrup tin, he started okay. offloading gravel into buckets. Those buckets were then passed up and down the cavern. And so it went on for the next two hours. Miller stopped for a break. He took some bread, milk, and whiskey. And sharing it with Floyd, they started to get to talking. Floyd had been in that cave for over 100 hours now. And seeing everyone working Jesus. together, Floyd was overcome with a sense of hope and relief. And so he began spilling his heart out to Miller. Here is what he is quoted in the newspaper. I believed I would go to heaven. Holy I shit. could feel that I'm to be taken out alive and with both my feet. I kept thinking, what would happen if the rock above me would fall? It, it caused me to shudder. I kept thinking to drive my mind to something else, but it wasn't much use. I couldn't do much to help those who came to help me, but I knew that a lot of people were willing to do all in their power. Yeah. It gave me courage. Tuesday morning, I thought to myself, four days down here and no nearer freedom than I was on the first day. How will it end? Will I get out? I couldn't think of it. I have faced death before, it doesn't frighten me, but it is so long. Tell them I am not going to give up. Hell yeah. Tell them I am going to fight and be patient and never forget them. Dang, he's eloquent. Meanwhile, Floyd's story kept growing. Pedestrians would gather around corner store windows to read the latest bulletins. <laughs> the press began using giant typefaces, commonly the only reserved threads. for declarations of war. Churches in all of the nearby counties were holding services for Floyd. Theatres even interrupted their shows to update the audience. Now, at the time, President Coolidge was in charge, and his Secretary of Commerce was a geologist, Herbert Hoover. Now, Mr. Hoover followed the story very closely, and so it was likely that the President did too. Even Congress Dang, paused session knew about to this. ask about the latest news from Sand Cave. By the end, the Floyd Collins incident would explode into the third largest non-political story between World War I and World War II. Well, what was the... All of this excitement the brought first an inundation second. of people to Cave City. Old population, 690. Yawn. New population, 10,000. Hotels one ran two? out of food. Oh, they Residents said non-political, so into I assume that hotels, that. Charging sizable premiums to let people nap in their bathtubs. The banks quickly ran out of on-hand cash, and 4,500 automobiles impatiently sat, backed up for two miles from 20 different states to drive onto the col- I'm sorry. Rich Campbell's birth was one. Bro, he's not that old. He's not that old. Collins Farm and turn their pristine green pastures into swampy parking. He's not that old. Deep blow all those tourists. Oh my lord. There's Miller, trying to free Floyd. Not that relevant right. either. Dude, Rich is... <laughs> is Rich the most flamed person? I feel like he is. A little bit of setup. What did he even Floyd do to deserve Miller, it? some remaining rubble rock. For anyone to lift the rock by hand would be impossible because like Floyd's body obstructs the hole. Miller grabs a crowbar and shoves it through the gap. Now he's going to lever it off Floyd's foot. Cool. The crowbar is now wedged against the rock. Next, he takes a jack. He positions it on top of the crowbar so that it will be forced against the ceiling. However, problem. That jack is too big. It doesn't fit. No. Miller yells up the tunnel for a smaller one, but this took some time. And when it arrived, 
too small, won't reach the ceiling. Oh my god. But instead god. of sending for another one, Miller takes two blocks of wood and bolsters them underneath the crowbar. Right, so the crowbar now sits higher, it fulcrums against the blocks, and the jack is sitting on top. All Miller has to do is expand the jack, which he will do using this spanner, holding it at the very tips Holy of his shit. fingers. Sounds this easy. Is scary. It's not. But that's the plan. Let's get him out of there. He turned the wrench. The jack Rich is, Okay, Rich is dating Mia. I'm sure he can handle it. No, but Mia roasts him too. I don't, I don't, I'm sure a lot of people here haven't like listened to our full um, podcast. What did Rich say that Mia said? Okay, first of all, Mia said to him, she's like, honestly, you're like a 7 out of 10. And then the other thing is, apparently all the time Mia to Rich is like, you're gonna be so cute when you're fat and bald. And Rich is like, what? But I mean, they love each other, I think. And the crowbar <laughs> is awesome. took strain. The whole thing slid apart with a pang. Floyd wasn't hurt, but Miller was contorting and exerting his whole body from back to fingertip. They tried again. Same result. Miller tried a new angle. Maybe this time. The <laughs> a jack. 7 in California is like a Texas 10. True. Is Rich a Texas 10? 7 out of 10 is a compliment, you ego heads. That's true, actually. I just feel like with... I, I don't know. I feel like even if you think your your partner's like mid, you just sh shouldn't say it. I don't know. Am I right? I don't know. Pressed. The tension increased. And this time, the rock moved. It fucking moved. With each turn, the stone shifted a little more. 7 out of 10, 7 you sh Okay, stop telling me. Okay. I, I paused on terrible time, I'm sorry. I'm Miller's sorry. hands shook with adrenaline, his face and body dripping with sweat. Pang. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm One sorry, of the blocks slipped, and the wooden tower went sideways. The rock painfully slammed back down on Colin's foot. Oh, fuck. Foot. Ah, you'll get it next time, Miller. Try again. Miller did. Again. And again. Adding blocks, taking them away, new crowbar position, change the jack position, every angle, all while Floyd was there, cheering him on. Yay. For the next four hours, he tried. No progress. Miller was exhausted. He couldn't do this on his own, but he was the only one slim enough to get in through the gap. The group decided to concede for now and return to the surface. They would take just a small break, but it looked to everyone like there was a clear way to get this man out. Holy shit. So Miller and Burton doing crawl it. back through the mud and the winds of the cave. As they made their way through, the cave was visibly sagging. The ceiling seemed lower. Stop pausing. The were harder to navigate <laughs> before. I have the tick to pause. I want to keep hands. talking about the, the rating thing. they made it outside to the fresh early morning. I'm trying not to do it. I'm trying to and control myself. they greeted with a new sight. Dozens of soldiers. The National Guard had arrived. In addition to the National Guard, Ooh, your hands to your face. was joining the story, Henry Carmichael. Now, Carmichael was the general superintendent of the Kentucky Rock Asphalt Company. He had been on site since Tuesday, and he was appalled at how primitive the rescue attempts had been. Shortly after Miller and co. had exited, Carmichael sent two men into Sand Cave to assess the structure's stability. They soon came back with a report. It was not good. Near the final squeeze, large cracks had formed. The ceiling was beginning to droop. Just pause, we're gonna do emo. All right, so the following <sighs> is a recounting of events. Okay, so I was gonna say, I, what's the point of dating someone if you think they're mid, right? Okay, but if you d are dating someone who's not your type, why would you tell them that? Seven out of 10 isn't mid. I feel like everyone says seven though for like above average. I get, ah. I, I, I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad. From one of Carmichael's men, Casey Jones. <clears throat> Casey and another worker spent about an hour in the cave, surveying its condition, looking at the boards, the ceiling, the stability of the walls. He continued deeper towards Floyd. He was fighting against his nerves. Maybe you, okay. Maybe you don't find the person 10 out of 10 attractive, but you love being, yes, that's what I'm saying. But then don't tell them that. 
The shifting of the rock pinged they don't need every to know. instinct to flee. But he heard Collins moaning ahead. Okay, I'm so done. I, I'm off. done pausing. He managed to make it through the squeeze and he arrived at the 10 foot pit. Seeing Floyd trapped, he tried to ignore the pebbles that were tumbling behind him. <sighs> Why do we have to start this conversation in the middle of this intense video? Okay, everyone shut up. Behind Casey, his partner is begging to leave. Below Casey, Collins is pleading for help. Please, I'm so thirsty. Okay. Casey okay. slid headfirst into the pit and hastily ladled Floyd some coffee. Floyd rejected it. No. No. Rumbling intensified from above. And in that moment, Casey realized that this was not I'm a hungry. plea for sustenance. Floyd knew that a cave in was inevitable. Scared and approaching his fifth day trapped, he was completely at his wit's end. He knew he was about to be trapped in that cave, and he didn't want to be trapped alone. For God's sake, Casey, don't leave on, him alone. Stay with me, please. Don't leave. Casey looked into Colin's eyes, set the coffee down, and pulled himself out of the pit. He wiggled underneath the sagging ceiling and crawled towards the turnaround room as fast as his limbs could scramble against the cave walls. He looked back to see the passage closing like a maw. Reflections from the bulbs shining around Floyd's neck were no longer visible. Instead, just sobs could be heard, muffled from behind the rocks. Bro, I literally just shivered. What the fuck? Miller and Burden awoke in the late morning, confident that today would be the day that they saved Floyd. They had some new equipment yeah. too. Some wire to wrap around the wooden blocks to prevent them from slipping. And they changed their mind about that acetylene torch. They'll use it to burn away two rocks that had previously blocked their way. But when Miller got to the turnaround room, all of that optimism left him. The entrance to the squeeze was now just a pile of debris. Miller froze, staring at it for a long while. Then he sighed and did the only thing he could think, attempt to move some of the stones. Yeah. But each adjustment led to more rocks just tumbling down and landing in that space. He persisted until, crash. A large chunk of clay landed onto his feet. No! Recognizing the danger, Miller returned to the surface. Fifteen minutes later, he emerged from the cave with a bloodied up nose and bruises down his back and shoulders. Burden caught sight and races over to him. Miller just says, for God's sake, just don't let Homer or anyone else back in there. Now, he didn't actually need to worry about Homer going back in there because he was sidelined with illness. But he oh, did, fuck. however, need to worry about Gerald because he was furious. Gerald had warned everyone that putting dozens of people in Sand Cave would cause a collapse. It certainly did. The rest of that day would be wasted, as men threw blame around and screamed at each other about how to handle the cave-in. Are humans as Floyd dumb? spent the rest of that day alone. No. The surveyors continued checking the cave throughout the day. By the evening, you're Carmichael human too. Oh yeah, I forgot. That's what you guys think. I forgot. Yeah, d no, stop. Don't listen to what Bonnie says. She doesn't know anything. To an assembly, Gerald took the floor. He was going to try one last daring rescue. He boldly announced his plan and an ultimatum. Listen up. There's death down there. The walls and ceilings are crumbling. Unless you're determined to take the biggest chance you ever took in your life, tell me now and stay outside. Next, they told all the Gorkas to get the fuck out of the cave, clear off. And over the next eight hours, Gerald would enter and leave Sand Cave at least five times, chipping away at that pile of debris. In the woods, men Jeez. sawed trees and chopped logs to shore up the cave walls. Underground, the crew reinforced cracks and wobbling boulders with fresh strips of wood. Gerald assessed that about four barrels of rocks would need to be moved, and piece by piece, they made that happen. Hell yeah! Steadily, they managed to move enough rock to allow Gerald to get within earshot of Floyd. Hey! Hello! I need food! Bad news! We can't reach you, but hold on! We're coming! Stone by stone, they continued. 
After a few hours, the light of the bulb around Floyd's neck was peeking through. A couple more hours, enough room for Gerald to squeeze through. Okay. Hell yeah, enough. Gerald. Floyd, I'm going for now. But when I get back, I'm gonna get you out of there. Exhausted but still determined, Gerald crawled back up the cave and marched to the men huddling outside. These guys are Giga Chads. Gather the equipment, and in an hour's Ever, time, it's why gonna didn't be you me help? and Floyd coming uh, out of that cave. I didn't know about this. I, I don't read the newspaper. Gerald entered Sand Cave for his final time. The walls had been reinforced. But mud and water was accumulating everywhere. He waded through it oh, and pressed on past the danger of the sagging ceiling. With determination on his face and a grease gun clutched in his right hand, he scrambled towards Floyd. But before the final squeeze, he stopped. A final squeeze. It was all gone. The cave ceiling had crumbled once again. What? Gerald stared motionlessly at the pile. Then he began to yell. Floyd! A rock disconnected from the ceiling and tumbled onto Gerald's head. Luckily, just a small one. He rubbed his scalp and called out again. Floyd! This time, a moan. It rumbled from the other side. Fearing that his friend was slipping out of consciousness, Gerald willed himself against the cave, launching the debris behind him with force. He ignored the pain from being struck on the head and clawed at the stone pile. He carried on this way for several minutes until a sharp, heavy rock dropped from the ceiling and landed squarely no! on his back. No more than 15 minutes later, Gerald returned Holy to the shit. surface, defeated. Bro, I'm freaking out. Only like, after the cave if they don't they get him out, I'm going to be like, what All the of the things that they could have done. Wait, why didn't we rig a portable telephone line? That would have been incredibly simple here in 1925. Yeah, why have we been running in and out to deliver updates? Why didn't we give him an AM radio? He could have had something to listen to and receive messages of support from the public. Wait, why don't we rig up a tarpaulin so we could lift his torso up so he wouldn't be slowly dying of exposure? Oh god, why didn't we run a feeding tube? That's also a technology we have in 1925. All too late. Now what? Holy shit. The one route to get to Floyd is closed forever. Hindsight, that Andy. That two options. Number one. Capitulation. No. Surrender him to the cave. Well, number two. Dig down from directly above Floyd. Now, the prospect of digging from above seemed almost fanciful. At least it did in the beginning. But luckily, they had some help. Owing to Miller's reporting, Floyd had become practically the most famous person in the country. The rescue had become a high priority for the governor of Kentucky. Lieutenant General Denhart Holy enters shit. the scene. Holy He's shit! He's been updated on the situation, and following We're shortly behind him guys. is a small army of miners and engineers. He declared to the despondent crowd, Gentlemen, I am here on behalf of the governor. The purse strings of Kentucky are open. Take this blank check, and bring that man out alive. <laughs> Floyd in that Damn. cold, wet confine could not have imagined the scale of the operation that was going on 55 feet above him. Authorities assumed control of Collins' rescue. Denhart gave Henry Carmichael the lead to dig, and Carmichael raced to get to work. He enlisted his employees, his fleet of expensive high-tech machinery. Professional groups were brought There's in no from all across the state. There's no way they fucked this up, right? Local townspeople were mostly excluded. And for the first time... If they somehow fucked this up, trapped, I swear to God. Now about to go ahead in a <laughs> systematic manner. Everyone knew the plan. Everyone had something to do. And everyone was working they better fast. Not. But just as hopes were rising, they were once again dashed against the rocks. They had all of this state-of-the-art machinery shipped in and assembled by the engineers and rearing to go. And it was all worthless. See, the problem is, the cave drew air into it. These diesel-powered engines oh pumped out enormous God. volumes of choking exhaust. Within no. a day's operation, 
The cave would be filled with carbon monoxide and Floyd would be dead from asphyxiation. Just as quickly as solutions would arise, the cave would parry them away. It refused to let this man go. So engineers and miners had wasted hours assembling everything, only to realize that they had to pack it all up and cart it away. Because the digging of a 55-foot shaft would be done with picks and shovels. Oh my God. Carmichael didn't know much about caves, I'm but he knew insane. a lot about quarrying. And he estimated that his team of 75 volunteers could dig and dredge at a rate of two feet per hour. If they worked around the clock, they would be digging directly into the spot where Floyd lays within 30 hours. Now, was it possible awesome. that Floyd could survive for another 30 hours? Absolutely. Let's go. The first ton was moved, and at first it was this easy work. This poor fucking guy, Just holy dirt shit. and clay. Carmichael understood well that this was a race against time, so he watched the men closely, and if they seemed to be slowing down, even a little, they would be yanked out and immediately a new worker subbed in. Nonetheless, the pace slowed. By 10 feet, the shaft narrowed greatly, which meant that only two men could work at a time. At 15 feet, they hit boulders, oh, pickaxes went in, and a system of pulleys and buckets had to be used to cart the rock out. Tracks were even laid to ferry the refuse to a dump site. Time passed. Damn, it got professional. Hours passed. Night went to day. The day was hot. This was yet another problem, because it's early February, there's tons of ice still in the ground, and its exposure to the fresh midday sun meant that the walls of Never the shaft were straight softening down rule and number the ground one. becoming sodden. The pace of digging yeah, they slowed. Up. It was now only half a foot per hour. Most anyone could do was watch helplessly on the sidelines and pray. Interestingly though, there were a lot of people on the sidelines. Floyd wouldn't have believed that the space above him had turned into a literal carnival what? in his honor. Vendors showed what? up to sell hamburgers, hot dogs, and souvenirs. Families what? spread out over blankets to listen to hymns from local churches. What? The local mountebanks sold moonshine what? and miracle cures. There was even a bloody uh, juggler. What? And old man Lee was there, walking around, shaking his jar, and soliciting donations. But where were Homer and Burden and Miller during all of this? Okay, let's back up a bit. People did not properly understand exactly how Floyd was trapped, and the news didn't help much either. So the obvious question started to arise. Why hasn't he been rescued yet? Just clear some gravel or pull a rope. How is this so hard? Motive was attributed. I heard they didn't even want to have him rescued at all. I oh my god! No! The schizos! The they had them in the 20s too! The from before. No! <laughs> I bet Floyd isn't even trapped in there. These oh were all my god. Rumors, and they got worse. You know what? I've heard he comes out at night, and then he just goes back in in the morning. <laughs> Other rumors included... I heard that after Floyd went into the cave, someone murdered him. Others said... I think they're withholding food and water from him, so he dies. This whole thing is a fraud. As time went on, Holy it frick. was harder and harder to ignore the hoax claims. Then, people started to form righteous mobs, claiming the whole thing was a fraud, and they started to get nasty. In fact, two people even went to the telegraph office and pretended to be Floyd sending telegrams to his mother. Here's Why? What, what is Floyd. the point? Please contradict statements that I am buried alive. Bro, people in sand have cave. always been the same. Stop. What Tell the fuck? All right. People Stop. have always and been the same, home. even before Stop. the internet. What Floyd the Collins. fuck? Naturally, the AP published these crazy. telegrams unquestioningly, and now word is out to the press that cringe? he isn't actually in the cave after all. That made the authorities look foolish, and it could not go on. So, a hasty court martial Holy was arranged, shit, and Homer, Miller, and Holy Gerald shit, were summoned. They hold one session on Monday and another on Tuesday. Even you? Lee and everyone else is cleared of charges. I would never do a such a thing. A retraction is written and things carry on. 
Generators rumble. Holy shit, 200 Pumps hours now. Men continued working in shifts and carrying away the earth. Here they are with strips of lumber to shore up the walls. They were only 25 feet down. The pace had slowed to four inches uh, 228 per hour. hours! In their desperation, they resorted to dynamite. But this did little to the boulders. Aren't they? What the fuck? Despite all these bleak circumstances, people's spirits were high because everyone was keen for their turn to dig. And because they had one more thing to latch onto. He is probably still alive. Now, Wait. how do they know that? Okay. Wait, were they not so checking? Light what? around Floyd's neck. Well, it's powered by a simple copper wire. Bare copper wire is subject to very minute fluctuations How would they check? in resistance. Oh, fuck. I so, thought that they moved the stuff blocking the entrance. An engineer a radio amplifier the whole to thing came to, oh my God. to read the current and see those I thought that it was just like one entrance block. They could still give him food and shit. There they were. About 20 per minute. The rate of steady breathing. Rose not listening. I'm this still thinking about the other thing we were talking about at 38 minutes. I'm sorry. Expands and contracts. They can read it from this device. And so they kept going. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And I'm going. Done. And going. 30 hours was the original estimate. I'm sorry now, for yelling. Now 144 hours had come and gone and they were only at 44 I'm feet. done yelling. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm then done yelling. Then rain fell. Rain that mixed with dirt to make mud. Much of which then froze to make ice. Ice which expanded and damaged the integrity of the shaft walls. Slowing down with every hour, they continued. What? Many more hours passed, and they were getting close. Bro, but he's But it was now not, 15 he's not alive. days since Floyd was first stuck in that cave, and people had mostly lost hope. That excitement in the newspapers was tempering down. Visitors began clearing out from Cave City. Many still held on to hope. People have never changed. But their final lifeline, that light bulb, had burnt out. And it wasn't possible to do any more readings on the radio amplifier without it. No. No one knew if Floyd was still alive. Bro. Another 51 hours would pass before, finally, they reached the 60 foot depth. I can't. I'm in. I can't. Chisel. A chisel is handed down. At 1.30 p.m. on Monday, February 16th, Sand Cave would open once again. For 17 days, Floyd had been trapped underground, stuck in the same position. Four days without heat or light. Twelve without food or water. Bro, oh, he's dead. But maybe the dripping of the cave water had provided him with some sustenance? There are stories of people surviving harsher extremes. Rescuers frantically tugged at rocks to widen the hole. Everybody stood by, absolutely silent, peering into that hole. Id flashed his light into the gap, then eased himself in. Oh Brenna aimed his light around the room, and then, finally, at Floyd. The first thing he saw was a golden shimmer. It was not the light bulb. It was the reflection of Floyd's tooth. His mouth hung open. Oh no. He was dead. No! Brenna was helped out of the cave, and he delivered the news. No! Dead. I was like, there's no way! After all this... There has to be some way. No. A coroner would later state that Floyd succumbed to exposure and that they had missed him by just three days. About That's the still, same time, still a long time that the light bulb had gone out. No. But what would they do now with the body? The shaft walls were ready to fall inwards and risking lives to remove a corpse was seen as just irresponsible. So the following morning, officials made a decision. Floyd would be entombed where he lay. The cave would keep its victim. Now this did not sit well with the family, but what could they do? The next day, they planned the funeral. The town emptied of people. 
and the shaft what? with Floyd at the bottom they all left? was refilled with okay. soil. But that's not quite the end of the story. Dang. But if you hung on for this long, keep holding on, because things are going to continue to get interesting. But first, let me do a wrap-up of where everyone is and all that stuff. Context, context. The Collins family already had financial hardship. Locals saw old man Lee scouring the rescue site for glass bottles. But the owner of the lamb, B. Doyle, and supposed friend of Floyd, hmm. was wholly unsympathetic. He erected a sign on the highway which said, 200 yards away, the body of Floyd Collins is imprisoned in Sand Cave. What? Then he Why? began charging tourists 50 cents apiece for the what? opportunity to gander into the hole. What? 100 years later, B's dead. Let's call it even. Also, remember those claims of Kentucky being an open purse? Well, the state reneged on the deal. They refused to pay many of the rescuers, and most of them went home without any compensation. Some of them did make some money out of the situation, though. They lucked into what? vaudeville gigs and roamed the country, giving their first-person account. Miller, what? however, received an astonishing offer, a $50,000 contract from the Chautauqua Lecture Circuit. 800 k Equivalent to the better part of a million dollars in today's money. He declined. He continued to work at the Louisville no. Courier Journal. The following year, his coverage of Floyd's story earned him the Pulitzer Prize. Now, the brother, Homer, he needed money and he agreed to do that vaudeville circuit. He stood on stage and regaled the audience about tales of his brother, their childhood, and the tragedy. But Homer made it known why he was up here on stage trying to get money. He had a mission. I kept thinking of Floyd lying in the muck where he had suffered beyond our power to imagine. Bro, I would never have peace what of a mind fucking horrible if he remained there. He wanted the money to dig Floyd up and get him out of that cave. A couple of <clears throat> months later, he had it. Oh, All right, shit. so back to Floyd. April 17th, 1925. Seven miners showed up to the scene. They began to dig. Within a week, they had arrived at Floyd. And this time, they approached from the other side of the rock formation. That way, they could remove the rock pinning Floyd's leg. They lifted him up from his tomb and laid him down on the fresh air above. April 26th, 1925. Floyd was set to rest in the family cemetery. Nice! His stalagmite had been set as a headstone to mark out his plot. What a good and brother. there he, he didn't laid. Give up. No, that's not actually where it what? ends. Oh. Okay, this is where it gets weird. What? Two years later, 1927. Times have been tough for the Collins. So Floyd's dad sold Sand Cave to a dentist named Dr. Harry B. Thomas for $10,000. Now, Homer okay. begged him not to because at the time, the government was starting to buy up tons of land in the area and turn it into national parks. They had to pay at a very competitive rate. But Lee was becoming a bit old and senile by this point. And frankly, it <laughs> sounds crazy. he cared about Homer or Floyd or anyone else for that matter. It's 100 years later, he's dead now, let's call it even. So, the point is, in this land sale with Thomas, Lee agreed to a very odd clause. And that clause said, everything on that property belongs to Thomas. And should he wish, for example, to exhume a dead body and re-embalm it, what? And put it on display in something what? really tacky like a, I don't know, a glass coffin inside what? a cave, maybe then that would be his prerogative. Lee signed yes. And Thomas did What? Do that. What? Dory made Floyd's corpse a tourist attraction. That's right. Two bits of gander come and wonder at the incredible dead man who died in a cave. But to add insult to injury, it worked. Visitors returned to Sand Cave to what? morbidly at Floyd. What? Within a few months, Thomas had turned Lee's failing farm into a successful business. What the, the rest of Collins fuck? Family is horrible. How is this real? This was like a hundred years get ago. Returned to them, including through the legal system. Less than a hundred years. Somehow, incredibly, the judge ruled in Thomas's favor, and so there what? he lay for the next two years. Drama frogs. Oh my god. Bro, this is so horrible. The cave was not done with Floyd. Until someone hatched a plan 
Two years later, it's midnight, outside oh, Sam Cave. Footsteps can be heard rustling through the brush. Now, we don't know who these two men are, but we know why they are here. To rob a grave. They sneak inside and clamber over the rocks in the darkness. Reaching Floyd's casket, they undo the latch sneaky, and throw sneaky. open the lid. There is his shriveled body. They throw him in a gunny sack and they race off into the night. For 800 yards, they carry dear Floyd like a couple of sweaty Santas about to deliver a really terrible Christmas present. Panting, out of breath, <laughs> knowing that they're going to get caught <laughs> any minute. I'm just in shock, dude. The what the fuck Green is River this? Hillside. There's no time. With a one, two, three, they launch his body towards the river, and Floyd goes sailing into the air, up, up, into the what? starlit beyond, <laughs> and landing in a bush. Oh God. <laughs> The two men what? flee from the scene. Now, the next morning, Why? Thomas notices that the body of Floyd is somewhat missing, and he contacts the authorities. The police come, <laughs> they dust the casket for fingerprints, and bloodhounds are given Floyd's scent and let loose into the hillside. A few hours later, they manage to find him. He tangled up mess near the river, but this time with a leg missing. That same one that was trapped under the rock. No f So, what? despite his protest, it had been amputated. Neither the leg nor the culprits were ever found. What? And while it would be nice to think that this was some well-intentioned duo that did this out of the kindness of their hearts to free Floyd, it's much more likely that it was an act of vandalism because Floyd was simply too much of a hot tourist attraction. The following day, Floyd was cast back into the cave. Oh my god. Back into his box. That's so and fucking it was covered horrible. By a metal <laughs> he just stayed Surrounded there. by a metal chain and locked with a padlock. He was now more trapped than he had ever been. Bro. This cave had spun fate once again to make sure that its victim would never leave. And so, time passed. Floyd's body would continue to decay. The rot from his body would eventually rot the casket too, and every decade or so, it would need to be replaced. What A few years fuck? later, he was no longer on display, but even then, he remained in that box for many more years. In 1961, oh shit, in Floyd's now. cave was purchased by Mammoth Cave National Park, and it was closed to the public there would be no more visitors. The entrance itself to Floyd's cave was closed with a steel gate and bolted, then welded shut. But the Collins family never gave up objecting to Collins' body being left in the cave. And here <laughs> the kids. is where the story ends. In 1989, at the Collins' request, the National Park Service ventured into Floyd's cave, continuing on a more than 60 year tradition. A team of people worked over the course of several days to remove him from the cave. Bro. They took him out, left the cave, locked it behind them, and laid Floyd to rest at the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church Cemetery. Holy shit. After 64 years in Sand Cave, he is now finally at peace. The end. Thank you to Wendigoon as Floyd. If you don't let me out, I'm going to hire a gang of hitmen to come to your house and kill your family. Samito as Homer. The BTS meal McDonald's bag that has I'm McDonald's hungry. And BTS. Shut the fuck up and eat some BTS, bro. Ordinary things as Miller. I'm enthusiastic. That was but fucking would terrifying. What a good fucking video, though. Exit. Rusty Cage as Gerald. Oh, well, hello there. Haven't seen y'all in a while. Welcome to my new home. And many kudos as Burden. Hey. Hey, buddy. You're right down there. I can. Uh, You're sleepy. Uh, I can. Oh. I can. Yeah. Can we get your coffee. Uh, cold and one cup, one cup of Joe. Uh, one cup of Joseph. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I a cup of Joseph from a little yeah. sleepy guy. Uh, also, by the way, in case you're confused about the channels, this is how it works now.